Hello everyone. So um, I'm Stephen Moore from Retail, um, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about um, uh, the 440U rack and also uh, a buzz bar spec update. Um, kind of the two are married together and I'll explain in this presentation why they kind of come hand in hand for this presentation. So first of all, just a little bit about Rital. Um, we were founded in 1961 um, and we now have r around 9,300 employees. We're headquartered in Germany, Herborn, and we have 13 production sites worldwide with 58 subsidiaries. Rital can be found in 90% of all industrial sectors worldwide, so we have um, quite a wide scope. Just on our OCP involvement, uh, we are an OCP Gold member and uh, we're working with um, the, on the next generation ORV3 rack right now. And also Caleb Lusk, um, the project lead for Rack and Power, um, he is um, from Rital himself here today. So just on the 44U rack, so um, just to make you aware, we worked with Penguin Computing. Um, he, we presented this together um, previously. Um, he's not actually here um, for this show, but um, he said I could go ahead and present this, this product for him. Um, and part of the, a lot of the requirements for this rack was shared with us from Penguin um, because they had the, the input from their customers um, on what they exactly they needed. Um, so the, here's some, uh, a summary of the things they needed. So the additional space that's provided with the 44U rack is specifically aimed at the high performance um, computers. Um, um, compute serving servers. Um, so as you can see here on the right, there's actually a gap um, where the buzz bars are not. And uh, this is specifically for cooling equipment, um, which is obviously, as most of you would be aware, this is a requirement for, for the high performance computing now um, because of the, the amount of heat produced from, from those, this, these pieces of equipment. Also, this gap can be used for um, special high performance equipment, which does not need buzz bars. So, um, that's why we have the flexibility of moving it around because um, what, they were, what they mentioned is the cables that come out of this equipment that does not need the buzz bars need to be able to be managed at a data center level um, without going across the back of the server equipment. So in the instance of when you have a lot of cables coming out of the equipment, as you can see from the configuration on the right, um, the cabling can be managed out of the top of the rack and up to the ceiling away and not interfering with access and maintenance on the rest of the rack. So this is part of the requirement and also when it comes to the cooling is also um, where the refrigerant pipes leave the back of the frame and where it's distributed to the rack, it's, it's more optimal in, for some customers to have that at the center of the frame. And that's why we have the two configurations. These configurations can be can adjusted um, in the field. It can be produced as two separate SKUs, whatever is suitable for the customer. Um, but the main thing around this that we request from Penguin was that it was completely flexible. So you can, it's fairly, it's, you do require a tool um, to remove the screws for the, adjusting the buzz bars, but generally it's, it's basic enough that it can be managed at, at, at the integrated level. Um, so that's, that's a bit on the requirements. So when we produced the racks, we kept, we took all of the requirements of Penguin um, um, and made sure that we included it in the frame. As well as the buzz bar interchangeability, which I've mentioned um, on the previous slide, we also had three 1OU power shelf spaces for each zone. So as you can see from the uh, single shelf in this image, um, there's actually three 1OU power shelf um, connection points in that. Um, and that also is flexible with 2OU power shelf equipment and also 3OU. So they wanted to make sure that whoever the customer was, they would be able to use whatever power equipment they would like. Another note on the power equipment for those shelves. Um, Penguin were specifically looking at high power solutions for the, um, the, hi the high performance computing. Um, and so providing the three 1OU power shelf spaces per zone allows them to reach kilowatts of up to 70 kilowatts. So this was a key part of their um, specification and they needed to make sure that we had that. Um, 
this power, this extra power, um, obviously we, in this rack we have the three buzz bars. Um, if we were to have a single buzz bar instead of the three, the cost of creating a buzz bar that can, can manage the power that Penguin required would be very expensive. So as with a lot of the Penguin products that um, we see today, they, they go for the three buzz bar solution and it also provides redundancy so if one buzz bar was to fail you would still have the two other buzz bars you wouldn't have a complete a rack which has no power so that's just a little bit on what we included in this um, and I've covered the interchangeability on the previous slide so once we created this product and we were ready to share this with the community, um, we realized that there was a couple of issues with the product um, that st made it stand outside of the current OCP spec. So the, one, the, the key part of why it was not able to be submitted right away as an accepted product was the power shelf. So on the current V2 rack, um, the, where the PEM nuts are positioned on the buzz bar made this a problem. So I'll just go into some detail with some images now on, on why, this was, why this was an issue. So as you can see, this is an image of the current specification, um, which gives you the 29 plus or minus one from datum C of the equipment latching square on the front of the rack to where the top PEM nut position is for the power shelf connection point. So this, is the, this was the key problem with the, the, this new, newly designed rack because it's, it sat outside of this specification requirement. Um, it's, it's worth knowing, noting that this specification was from the, the outset of the OCP specification based on what Facebook required for their power shelf um, capability, which didn't ne necessarily consider the wider market, especially for a 1OU power shelf. So here is an image of if of how the buzz bar would inter, um, interface with the power shelf as the power shelf was provided from Penguin. So within the 1OU space, um, the buzz bar comes straight out of the back and then because of the specification I've just show, shared the 29 plus or minus one, it actually sits above and you get this problem. And with a lot of the customers that we worked with, we actually found that they had to provide a, almost like a dog leg connection point um, from their power unit specifically to be able to sit within the specification. Or we would create a special buzz bar which would have that adjusted position, but then that would cause us problems in that we would continually need new, new buzz bars for every customer based on what they had as an equipment piece. So this is the, um, we've actually submitted this specification already and it's, it's, it's been ex accepted. So this has moved on recently. So this was the suggestion made, put forward by Rital um, to, to include the 1OU power units um, and what they require. Um, so the new suggestion was the 19 plus or minus one mil from datum C um, to the top PEM nut, center of the top PEM nut position. So this allows the 44OU rack to be submitted and stay within the specification and we believe this th we put this um, in the workshop in Amer um, in the US um, a few months ago we asked the community if they had a preference on where this specification lied so the power shelf providers can make sure that they're happy with the spec and what we're what we're proposing and everyone was happy with that this was a rough was a good standard for how the power shelf should be datumed and so now this has been accepted the 44 URAC will sit within the OCP specification and can be considered uh, an accepted product. Um, there is a note to, um, I would like to mention as well that even though this is for the 1OU buzz bar, um, sorry, 1OU power shelf, it would be ideal if the 2OU and also 3OU power units, which can be provided, also sits within this specification. Um, because then we can make sure that we have a standardized position for connection points for all power units. So this is maybe a consideration that we can look at going forward, because um, at the moment, from 2OU to 3OU, generally the, the uh, connection points are straight out of the center of the power unit. And then you have, again, you, need, you have a more variance um, in where these permanent positions are placed for the buzz bar. So this is just an image of the 19 plus or minus one for the uh, penguin power units and as you can see this lines up correctly. So um, 
now that we've actually suggested this specification, as I mentioned, it's already been accepted. So you will see this in the in the uh, updated specification. Um, and we hope that this will now solve problems for a lot of the power providers. And also as a rack um, manufacturer, we can be completely aligned with the people that we're working with to make sure that we don't have um, a massive variance in the way that the buzz bar is connected to the power units. So. Now that I've presented this to you, I just, we, we would like to ask, is there anything else that we think that should be considered in this 44OU open rack um, before we submit this as an approved product? Um, as I've said, we've got past this problem with this specification, and now we are looking to make sure that we've covered absolutely everything before we submit this, and that it, stick, it sits within the realms of the specification, and it's, it, it's good for the, for the customers. So um, anything, any questions on the uh, 44OU rack? I, I might just jump in, Steve, and actually say kind of time frame for Rital submitting the 44 OU rack into the foundation for um, review and, and approval is within the next six months. So um, if there is anything in the community uh, here or when people review what was presented here, they, they have a little bit of time to reach back to Rital or back into the community and put those suggestions in. And we can definitely review and and take uh, take those comments. So, yep. So, if anyone wants to get involved, um, here's some links um, which will be um, on the presentation that you can um, give us some feedback. Um, and also, uh, my contact details are on the OCP website um, for this presentation today. And if you have any questions or want to get involved or give some feedback um, towards the spec and also the 44 e rack, please let us know. Um, and I can, we, we will we'll work on any, any suggestions, um, also with Penguin's assistant also. So. Okay. I, I do want to also point out one more thing yep. is uh, the, the project wiki, the 2.2 specification. Um, it was just approved last week to go from 2.1 to 2.2. So I'll be uploading that as soon as I get time. Uh, so you'll see an email come out from myself with that, with that update. It's just an FYI if anyone has questions on 2.1 to 2.2. This really covers it uh, in, in what that is. So, okay. Thanks, everyone. Okay.